Hi guys and welcome to our next installment. So today we're going to be talking FICA, um, AML, anti-money laundering, as well as POPI, the POPI Act or the Popeye Act, okay? So we'll start with the protection of personal information. So just so that you know that whatever information that you supply, your personal information, your ID number, your tax number, your ID copies, your bank statements, your pay slips, your um also whatever information that you supply a financial services provider always know that it is protect protected uh, because we are governed by the protection of personal information act which came into effect on the 1st of july 2020 all right so under this act you, everything of yours is protected so we as an accountable institution we need to make sure that your information is protected your information was leaked because of our negligence we could be fined all right or our license can even be revoked so this has been you know issued by the government the government gazette is there i'll leave the link below the link of the aml anti-money laundering the link for um fika and the link for papaya so that you just get a just a background just an understanding of why is this information required but what happens if i do give this information and is it protected all right then we have fika which is the financial intelligence center act all right so this it, together with aml this act was instituted in order to fight financial crimes such as money laundering fraud tax evasion terrorist financing activities and identity theft all right so we are governed by this act and this act came into effect in 2001 right so it's act 38 of 2001 so we are governed by fika so every time i speak about fika all right we just um use it as a collective word for all your personal documents so fika would entail your id copy all right and your id number it entails your proof of residence, your address. It entails your tax number. It entails your bank account details or your proof of bank. It entails your um, your marital status. It entails whether you your marital status, whether you divorced, single, or um, deceased, death certificates. Um, it entails your what else a SARS document so a proof proof of your tax number so all of this is FICA so when I say Mrs X I need your FICA this is what I'm talking about all right so that we can identify you we can know who you are right so all this information then goes to our compliance officer who does a due diligence so before we even take on a client so now let's say you've decided you've met your IFA you've met your advisor you're happy you're going to invest but before we can even touch your money and take your money as an accountable institution we need to make sure that we know who we're dealing with all right as much as you need to make sure who you're dealing with regarding the FSP and the financial advisor we need to know who we're dealing with is as the individual so we need to know number one Obviously, from our needs analysis, we need to establish, can you even afford this investment? Where is the money coming from? All right. So part of FICA and AML, anti-money laundering, we need to know the source. Where are you getting this money from? So let's say you want to invest 1 million rand. Where did you get this 1 million rand? What is the source of this 1 million rand? Right. You sold a property. Cool. Selling a property, we will have a paper trail when the property was sold what was the initial valuation how long did you actually have the property was it actually in your name um we would need to see the compliance officer needs to see all of that to say okay this is where you got the money this is how much you sold it for and this is the money that now is in your bank account okay so that's one step second secondly how we can prove your source of income is your income you know with your pay slips especially if you're a new client we need to know can you actually afford this investment? So if you are, say, investing 10,000 Rand a month into a retirement annuity, all right, and you're earning 15,000 Rand a month, we need to find out how are you able to invest 10,000 Rand and you're earning a basic of 15,000 Rand and you're investing 10, how are you living? Are you living on 5,000 Rand? How does that work? So we need to make sure that we understand that what you are telling us about yourself and how, how you're investing correlates, all right? Um, and then let's say you win the lottery, 
okay we'd have proof of that you won the lottery let's say money from the road accident fund we'd have proof that you received money from the road accident fund. say you earn fifteen thousand rand and we have your pay slips and we can see it in your bank bank statements and you know you are taking out a, a thousand rand investment into an ra or a unit trust then i mean we don't really need you know to verify if this thousand rand comes from your salary because i mean we can see you earn twenty five thousand rand and obviously a thousand rand of that money will go into an investment so that's about board it's only when things start a bigger amounts of money we need to make sure that we understand and we know exactly where this money comes from all right so that would be our source of funds and that's why we would need all your documents to verify you as a person compliance uses a, a, um, a system that is linked to home affairs so that would also when we type in your id number to the system we can pick up your id number and we can see the document we have in front of us is real and the person we met is a real citizen of south africa um or you're a foreign citizen or whatever the case may be but the systems do talk to each other then we'd need to verify your either your passport if you're a foreign national there's also ways of verifying your passport then we'd need to look at your proof of residence where you live right we'd need a, a utility bill if you don't have a utility bill you can always supply with a contract you know account statement that reflects your id that reflects your address on the your physical address right no p nobody lives at a p.o box nobody lives at a post box but people live at an address right so should we need to look for you if the authorities need to look for you for whatever case for every reason they know where to find you um so some people don't own properties this really? agreement would be one of the things that you need to supply and once you've supplied that then we can we know that okay so you, you are renting um if you're living with someone then they would sign a cohabitation form give us their fika their id and their proof of residence and a form to confirm that you actually live at the residence then another thing we'd need also is your proof of account we'd need a bank statement um or a letter from the bank confirming that you have an active south african bank account that you can use to transact and it's active right and then if you're a brand new client we'd need your um your salary slip three months just to confirm that you do earn a salary remember we need to know what your source is where you're getting your money or you can say t834 whatever it's called the sales document that's the one when you do your tax returns that's the one that you'd need to supply and in there it shows your annual income so that's another document it works as a document to confirm your income and a document to confirm your tax number right so with all that all the FICA documents that you send through it's either you send them certified or you bring them with you and a commission of oath who's usually an IFA certifies the documents for you then we know that at least you know we've done our part so should anything happen down the line and you are probably convicted for some money laundering or you're a suspect then they would want to they'd come to us as the council institution to say you've done business with this client who's a suspect now for an investigation of money laundering we need to see what documents did this person present to you and how did you confirm or how did you verify their source of income so it's things like that that need to be kept in a client's file for uh, you know a minimum of five years and this information is renewed from time to time so every five years you'd have to go through an aml process a fika verification process to make sure we're still dealing with the same person this person is alive this person is who they say they are and they still either earn the same money or they earn more money um if they don't earn any money anymore but they're still investing let's find out where they're getting this money and how are they still able to invest without getting an earning an income so it's just things like that that we need to be aware of and things like that we need to always be cognizant of so if your ifa or financial advisor asks you for these documents this is the reason and this is why they're asking for these documents any accountable financial services institution will require these documents it's very hard in south africa at the moment or anywhere in the world to conduct any transactions without your fika documents and that is just the way it is so next time you get a request for fika don't be scared just know that your personal information is protected 
and you know trust that the accountable institution is doing everything they can to protect your information and now you know why we need these documents okay and these documents are also needed for the investment firms as well um, usually investment firms might not even require it on their files because there is a place on application forms where we tick as the financial institution to say we have this FICA on record and it is available at any time. So they are putting the responsibility on us to say that you are responsible for this person's FICA. All we need is the application form. Everything filled in on the application form should correspond to what you have on the system on file regarding FICA. We'll continue with the investment, but should anything happen or should we get audited as the investment firm, we will come to you for FICA documents that should have been available on this day that the client signed their forms and you'll need to present it to us. All right, so there is a lot of um, governance around all of this and protection, so you can rest assured that your information is protected, right? All the links will be below till our next installment and thank you for watching.